So today, guys, we have a video that's going to be a bunch of fun. And you know what it is because you clicked on the title here. We're going to be working on this D6 Caterpillar dozer here. It's a cable dozer. We believe it's a, like a 19... late 1940s to early 1950s. This has been sitting here a while. It's been in this barn. Don't know the last time it was ran. Something I acquired. But anyways, let's before we jump into that and do a little bit of a walk around here, if this is the first time you guys have made it to this channel because you guys are interested in seeing old equipment like this run, welcome. Uh, my name is Ben. Channel's the Iowan Farmer, more or less. We don't do a lot of uh, big equipment, start fine time things like this, but this is uh, a little bit special. Most of the time, it follows me around. Uh, doing farm stuff down here in southern iowa and if you guys do enjoy videos like this trying to get some old barn find equipment up and running take a second hit the thumbs up button leave me a comment it'll really help out the channel we might have be able to make this my biggest video yet so this is going to be a fun one trying to get this piece of american history up and running and maybe and maybe get a little bit of dirt pushed with it this fall i did get my hands on the books for this old gal we got the engine book um the tractor book these two the bindings broke i gotta rearrange those a little bit and then this operator manual i did read it and it actually it's got some really cool pictures it tells you the maintenance things to look at uh and starting procedures things like that which is actually kind of really important because unlike most things where you hop in and you turn the key and uh you start whatever you're uh, gonna be running this isn't that simple on this dozer this dozer here has a pony motor so you start the pony motor uh which happens to be luckily an electronic start here throw some decompression stuff uh, and then you kick it into gauge using kick it into gear using a couple of these levers uh, which then the gas motor which is the pony motor turns over the diesel motor and then you can start the diesel motor that way that's this whole simple but complicated system it's got going on so i have a secret weapon coming uh, steve uh who you guys have seen on my channel before he has really cool shot pits with the automatic floors and stuff he's really smart when it comes to mechanical stuff and he's actually been around these before so he's going to come out here today help me kind of check everything out see if we can get it started because otherwise i might be a little bit lost i i'm not really good at diving into motors and things like that I can fix things, but I'm not mechanically this way that good. I've just never had the chance to learn with somebody. Someday I hope to get the chance to like build, rebuild an engine with somebody so I can learn that. Man, take a look at all this cool badging. Caterpillar D6. The big old cable on the front of it. Cable runs down the side here. Ran by these levers here. To this big old behemoth in the back so yeah that means this thing has no hydraulics on it it is ran off of a pto i don't know if the pto is belt driven or whatever runs off a of pto runs the cable and the cable is actually what runs the the blade no hydraulics definitely old school pretty cool you can tell it's been in here a little while um it's kind of sunken into the ground the undercarriage is there it's kind of interesting that's got a lot more life than that does in it but um yeah six cylinder and my guess is that it's like a two cylinder pony motor probably got like an eight foot blade on it be nice if uh it actually had the root rake for it i'd be pretty interested if i could find a root rake it's like turning around and sitting into a, a time capsule here. Cobwebs included. Look at that seat. That seat's even in good condition still. Only minor duct tape. Brake, brake, clutches, throttle, down, all the way forward. I don't know which way is which. Um, Where's the neutral at? There's the gear selector. So that's a neutral. Forward. Reverse. Ah, my secret weapon's arrived. And this is the hand clutch. 
Oh boy. <laughs> so here's Steve. You guys have seen Steve. He's here to. Hi guys, how we doing? He's here to give me uh, all the pointers on maybe how to get this thing running. Yeah, we'll and see. See, <laughs> see if we can. See if we make a old machine come to life here. I don't know. What do you think? The first thing we need to do is probably turn the starter. Make sure it's going to turn. Turn the starter, which means we got to put the battery in. Correct. So, which I already went and got a new battery, and this is a six volt machine, and they apparently at some point made a twenty four volt starting systems, which apparently people didn't think batteries and start engines wasn't a good idea, because this one's a six volt, but you got to start the pony motor. That or these old motors, when it got cold, are so hard to start that they just kept having pony motors. Steve was telling me actually, like one of the advantages of a pony motor, when it gets cold, is and Steve, you can correct me here, is is actually the exhaust runs through the engine or through the manifold. So like the exhaust right. comes out here, right there. Yep, and right runs here. through and then yes. comes up there. The so the exhaust from the pony motor runs into the engine. And then you can actually turn the engine over for a little while without any fuel supplied to the engine and any compression on the engine. And that will actually warm the engine up before you kick fuel into it and put the compression to it. So it's actually should be easier in theory to start in the winter with these pony motors. Um, if you can get the pony motor started. There's one battery. That's what starts your pony motor is the battery. If you put your positive negative side on first, then if you're putting the positive on and you touch the frame, what are you going to get? You're going to get a dead short across your battery, which you really don't want. Okay, now we've got the power there. You better make sure she's in neutral. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think you can move these things on a pony motor, though, can you? I wouldn't. That feels like neutral. First thing that Steve says to check is to check to see if the starter will actually turn over. So you can actually start this in two different ways. So there's an electric start on this one, or you can actually pull start the pony motor right back here by putting a string in this uh, pulley. And Steve was saying that you'd have to turn the magneto on, and that's what would fire it, but we're not doing that. We're going to try and start it with the electric start. First thing we need to do is to see if it will actually turn over. Go ahead and see if she, if she turns over. So we got the chance of it starting. Okay, um, so let's, let's try the magneto. That's, let's see if it has So the magneto spark. was, you just turn the magneto off. Right. Yep. Turn it there. Spark. So we have spark. So what Steve's looking at now is yeah. actually the injector oil. So all the injectors are behind this plate, and apparently if it doesn't run right, you can take this plate off and look and see uh, with, it un with the decompression lever thrown, you should be able to actually turn the engine over with the fan. You want to see if you can actually turn the engine? It's the sure. decompression lever sure. actually thrown. Just give it a shot. There. So. I can turn it. You can turn it, yep. Yep, I'm turning the engine. So if the injectors weren't working right, you can take that panel off, turn the engine, and see if any of them are getting hung up because this is what oil baths it apparently and uh, lubricates that and so if this gets ran without it it can get them kind of sticky so we're good there too i think i need to go get a, just a sock a wrench yeah oh yeah you got a tumble yep that's right mm, it's a little, little dirty but it's not all it's not all corroded but it's, it's getting oily so the first time I looked at this, I thought this was actually uh, like the starter for this, so it might have an electric start. But that's actually the old generator. Steve says that's the voltage regulator. Um, probably turns on back. Checking the oil for the pony motor, which I checked it looked good there. And then uh, the engine oil's down here. No, that's what's that one? That's probably a crank oil or clutch oil. I don't know what that one is. No, but it's okay. And then there's the engine right there, I believe. Yeah. There's plenty in there. <laughs> Typical good old diesel engine. 
I did stop in town this morning and I got some non-ethanol gas, so uh, not to rag on ethanol, obviously. We want ethanol to be burned and everything, but small engines and long sitting-wise, no alcohol, the better. And older stuff. And older stuff, no alcohol. Because gaskets are not made to accept alcohol. Yeah. Here, here's a pair of pliers. We might be able to break that. What we don't want to do is drop that bulb, though. <laughs> Probably not. It's a cat machine, but you can still get parts for it. Yes, you can. Wiggle on at the top there, Steve. It doesn't wiggle where you think it wiggle. Oh, boy. Got an important phone call, Steve. Been waiting on somebody to call me about the car insurance. Okay. Clean up the little fuel bulb here. And some, like... Fuel filter. And some like rust and stuff. It's like yeah. a bunch of little brasses stuck on top of each other. It's not yeah. even really a screen, is it? Huh. We got basically the old gas out of the machine here. We we're going to put some new gas in there, but the gasket on the uh, fuel bulb is kind of bad. So we're actually going to run up the road here and try and go uh, make one real quick. That way it might not leak so bad. It might still leak, but it's leaking pretty quick right now. What do you think? Is that going to work? Uh, these scissors are less than perfect. Well, I'd say so. Lunch time. That gas looks substantially better, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we just made a, I had some gasket material that was, I don't know, eighth of an inch thick. Was it even that thick? Yeah, maybe half that. At 16th of an inch thick gasket paper uh, just cut out a new gasket to shove up in there if that didn't work we were going to try an o-ring but gasket paper works so now we got gas going through that filter bulb which means that we can head around here to the other side now and we should be able to see if we can get gas to come out of so this is the this is the turn the valve that turns on the fuel we'll just try and start the engine and then i'll have to clean engine filter here we'll have to no need to mess with the diesel and stuff until we get to see if this little engine right runs. right make sure this makes noise and then we go next step down and down is Yeah, you did. that's like pushing out compression down there. It's just pumping out the gas down there. <laughs> she got allowed, Steve. <laughs> There's no muffler, just a <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know. A guy ought to find himself a little much for the top of that thing. Yeah. Wow. It is noisy. The next step is to engage the clutch and turn the engine over. Yeah, so we need to, uh, for that, we need to check out everything. And I need to check out the air filter be a good first okay, step. So go turn off the gas. Yes, on, the on that side, side yeah. <laughs> That's too fun right there. <laughs> you just started something that probably hasn't started in... Who knows? So something else that's uh, on these older tractors is that they have... What, what are these technically called? Like oil breathers? Or just air filters that had... an oil... I got this side off. She feels heavy. Oil oh bath. man, oil bath. Oh, there was a mouse or something in there, Steve. 
There's multiple mice in that bad boy. Oh, 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 oh. I might be here. Hold on. Oh, man, that's bad. Good thing we opened that one up. <laughs> so what's special about this cat is that it's, uh, it's caught quite a few mice. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. I can smell that as soon as you dropped it. I feel like it spins. Ooh. Ooh. How many dead mice do you think are in that thing? I don't know, but it's pretty ganky. Ooh. That's all right. Let's get after it. Yep. That is that smell is just something else. The mice smells. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have really a weak. <laughs> I don't really have a weak stomach when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, oh boy, Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> oh, I just look at him. <laughs> so I'm actually like laughing at myself because I want to clean it. Oh, I can't really look at it. But I don't have a weak stomach except for when it comes to. That kind of stuff, I can kind of look at it a little bit, but man, if I was doing what Steve was doing right now, you guys would see a lot of gagging. Yeah. Gosh dang it. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Wow, that sucker is chock full of them things. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> okay, so what I was saying before uh, I started gagging, I don't know where we started that at, is, is that on these old machines, they have oil bass, and this one... Uh, happened to also catch mice, so I've officially come up with the nickname for this dozer and it's barn cat. Steve, you want to explain kind of how this works, how you know more about these than I do? Okay, first of all, this is the oil part of the oil bath. And this container is filled with the oil inside and outside the ring. Then this, this piece fits in here, which then directs the air coming in here, and then it comes through the oil, and then it goes up through the filters these are the filters on its way up to the air intake and there are numerous screens there will be six screens Thank you. then this piece sets in on top and holds the screens together and then you gotta you gotta put the wing nuts in and we're gonna fill it with uh, 1540 either we got a whole leak on the bottom are spilled. Just leaking. So I don't know if we got that on camera, but we went to put that together and we got a little wheat leak going on here. So we're going to try and stop the leak. Do we need to do anything on the inside or just nope. on the outside? Nope. Well, just that clean enough. Man, you guys are missing out on smell vision right now. <laughs> Just about five year old aged mice. Sauteed. Bathed in oil sauteed. and sauteed. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> okay. Where is the where is the fuel tank? Wait, you're sitting on it? I don't know. There's no squeaky surprises in here. Is that the fuel gauge? That's the yeah, fuel gauge. It'd be the fuel gauge. That's pretty darn cool right there. 
It says that uh, we are at. It says we're sitting right around 25 gallons in there. Should I, should I do anything with it? Should I just say we're okay with that? We're in neutral here. I think. Which way does that take the lever? That takes. That's got to be shut off there. Back shut off, forwards more. You can, you, but you can run that up there. Yes. I'm in neutral. So we're at the point where we have changed the battery. We have made sure that the starter engine, the pony motor, runs. We've cleaned its fuel system. We've cleaned its bulb. Made a new gasket for it. Um, we've checked all of the oil reservoirs that kind of pertain to us. We cleaned the air system that was a, that was our little hiccup so far today i had to braze the bottom of it a little weep holes in there but no more mice in there i guess as far as we know we can try and start this thing yeah yeah mm -hmm. start her up oh well, you want you want you want to do it or you let you I'll let's see it. if i can okay so turn on the fuel fuel on i did open that pit cock on the bottom down there Okay. This thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then this so on? That to on. That's the magneto and that's the starter. Okay. Probably. I would mess with the left lever. Throttle Yeah. yeah. Throttle in. So we're having issues here. So this is like the flywheel brake, and that's supposed to be like engaged, right? When it's saying pull back, is it pull back's engaged? Disengage the flywheel clutch of our pressing clutch control lever forward as far as it'll go. Which is that. Which I'm thinking there should be brake on that. So I'm wondering if it's the clutch, you know, these old clutches can be get froze up can get rusted tight. I wonder if it's... Uh, like there's a panel right there that we could look down in there with some like 9 16ths. 
I'm honestly wondering if we got some linkage and I'm not being able to push that forward far enough to get it to slow down that I can actually put it into gear because like here it's in gear guys so you got first to be able to take this and this should go forward there's that's reverse and that's forward in that gear and then that's the neutral where you should be able to do this and put it into a gear and that should go forward except for we're thinking I'm um, not clutch braking I feel like we don't have enough movement there. I feel like we're missing something. Brake adjustment equipped with a clutch brake, which stops a clutch shaft from turning. E. That would be right down there next to the clevis. So what we decided here is that basically the clutch brake isn't working correctly, which it's right there. And uh, we've taken one of the adjustment nuts off of there to try and get some more adjustment into. Oh, that's really bad lighting, but try and get some more adjustment into this to hopefully give us a clutch break. And by doing so, it was basically out of adjustment. So we've taken a bolt out of it. Probably not the most recommended thing to do, but we're going to do it just to see if the clutch is actually frozen. 7 16th, yeah, it's yeah. right about there. Pretty much on the money. I just put it there and it went to. That's oh. two and a half right there. That's what the book calls for. Okay. So this is the clutch brake right here. We took it all the way off. There is a little bit of pad left, not much though. And uh, we're going to actually take. Now you guys can see what I was talking about. We're going to take this bolt all out, slide this bolt to this position, and then this won't be down there. Hopefully, giving us enough adjustment that we can make this clutch brake work. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, so we're going to put this back in there. You guys won't be able to see any of it because I hit the light and broke it. So we'll put this back on there, see if we got adjustment. Try and start this back up here. Give us a second. I'm guessing that clutch brake peg goes in a hole down there at the bottom of the pivot. Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? So here we go again. We tried to adjust the brake here. I don't know if we talked about actually how to start this thing um, by without me doing it and when then you can't hear. The way this gal starts is here's your throttle. That's half throttle. So this is your clutches. So I got to pull this one forward here and that gets thrown in. Here's my gas. So you turn the gas onto the pony motor. This is the get decompression lever for that. So what you need to do is turn your gas on here. On you start it, you throw the clutch, put it in gear, which turns over the motor. Let it turn over for a second. You've got fuel to it throw the compression and uh, after you throw the compression it should start chucking out some black smoke start it up shut your fuel off turn off your magneto or whatever that's called and uh, your engine is start fuels on decompressions on this is on turn this should start <laughs>
the right cl left clutch and then you gotta hit the brake. The left clutch and hit the brake. You got some throttle, let her see. Thank you, Steve. I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have been able to do that sure. one without. Oh boy! You're certainly welcome. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Oh yeah. I'll just take that down the road here and do a little dirt work with it here when I get a chance to push a little bit with it. But I feel confident that I can start that bout whenever I want. I know it moves. All, all the idlers were rolling. Good. I'll uh. I'll come out and I'll grease her good now. So I think we proved a proved the concept. So there it is. <laughs> we got a dozer back going. It's um that's that's definitely gonna be one of my favorite videos that I've done in 2022. If you guys did enjoy that, hey, please hit the thumbs up button. It'll help this video out, it'll help the channel out. We're getting ready to move into harvest season, so it'll be a lot of harvest related videos coming out here soon. We've got grain bin building videos coming out and some other fun things coming along the way here. So if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, man, that was fun, wasn't it, guys? That was that was definitely fun. I uh, can't thank Steve enough for coming out and helping me out. Hopefully you guys got a smile out of that. I know I did. Um, I know my neighbor, who's dozer this was, that he's he, he was smiling today too. So, um, yeah. That's pretty darn cool. So I think that's all I got for you guys. If you want to see the next video, go uh, go check out one of uh, Steve's shot pit videos that I've done on the channel here. I'll put them down in the description, and I'll probably put a card up there at some point too. Yeah. I guess that means we'll see you in the next one.